Man, I'm still getting excited about that promo <laughs> video. It's our second time doing this, and I just love seeing it. It's like oh, it's awesome. But I got I got gross bumps. <laughs> hey man, thanks. Hey, greetings, everyone. Welcome to episode 85 of the Death Taxes and Sports Podcast. We're doing here to do a very special episode talking about the Florida Panthers. I have my good friend here. Hopefully, I'm not gonna butcher his last name, but forgive me, Evan Charbonneau. How did I do? He did perfect, man. I appreciate awesome, the intro. Awesome. No doubt, no doubt. Sir, how are you doing on this? Lovely afternoon. I don't know if it's cold where you're at, but it's a good 75 degrees here, and I'm in a good mood. Oh, I'm I'm we're sunny and warm where I am, and I'm in enjoying my Saturdays just like you, brother. Um, it's uh it's a great day. Awesome, awesome. And how we came about doing this episode, I had wanted to do one for the Florida Panthers because this type of run by your team, a team that was one point away from not making the playoffs. <laughs> To beating my Boston Bruins when we were up three games to one, we lose overtime. Then you guys go on an incredible run, winning 12 of your 13 games. Um, such a phenomenal run. And I was like, man, I got to bring someone on. And literally, as I thought about it, I saw your video. Do you want to tell the video, the viewers about your video? Yeah, no, I know. Um, I'm just like anybody else, right? When you, um, you think something good's going to happen, you want to get that moment, capture it. Uh, as soon as we went on the power play there with two minutes to go, I was like, I got to get this on video. You never know what could happen, right? And then lo and behold, Kachuk comes around that net and just buries it. And just the the sensation and the rush of 27 years of just being lost out in the NHL world. In that moment, it just felt like as a fan base, a lot was lifted off our shoulders. And you can see it as I jump up, just excited, just that we finally did it. I mean, and that's why, like, I that's why I love sports so much. It's because of these big underdog moments, and I feel that the NHL has more of these moments than any other sport. There's so many teams. You think about the LA Kings many years ago that were an eight seed and won the Stanley Cup, and this is just yeah. one of those sports where it's like you just got to get hot at the right time, and yeah. you just it just happened to be at the expense of my Bruins. But but we won't we won't. Uh, <laughs> We won't, we won't, we won't talk about that too much, man. But like I was saying, like I just want to know, like how did you become a Panthers fan? Uh, I originally grew up in Ontario, and um, at the time, you know, I, everybody thinks you're a Leafs fan growing up in Ontario. But uh, during that expansion year, you know, you see the logo, you're a young kid, and then you just kind of gravitate to it. And then I just slowly, because uh, I was up at the time about seven years old when they got started. I know, I know I'm not like a lot of the people back home, back in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, you know, being there, but uh, seeing that logo and then you go fall in love with some of the players like John Van Beesbrook at the time, uh, Ray Shepard, Dave Lowry, Scott Mellenby, and then my favorite player, and I hope he's watching, but yeah, we follow, we follow each other on Twitter, Bill Lindsay, who's amazing. He's, he spent his whole, he's was a career Panther and now he's down in Florida as a broadcaster for us, so just falling in love with that team, like you, like I said, and seeing all those players. I mean, like it's it's just crazy. And when you talk about Kachuk, and we're and and we're saying before the before the show, I was like, <laughs> I got to make sure I say this man's name right. Um, but you know, it's just crazy how team how people become fans of teams, right? Uh, it's... Like. Like I didn't become I only came Bruins fan because uh my buddy Ben actually who's one of co-hosts who just um who who commented on here, we used to go to Providence Bruin Providence College Bruins games back in 2010 and 2011. And then yeah. that next year they won the Stanley Cup. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll be a Bruins fan. And then ever yeah. since then they've been disappointing me ever since then. So it's always cool to hear about people's stories about how you're a Panthers fan. And we'll get to some other hockey stuff, but what other fans are you a team of? I mean, we're a sports podcast. What, what other <laughs> what other teams do you represent? You got some jerseys back there. Oh, I got I got a few. I got uh, I got the Browns. I'm a sucker okay. for punishments. So I got my Browns. Oof. <laughs> uh I'm a I was a big Brady Quinn, Josh Gordon guy, and Tim Couch. So I'm a big Browns guy. Uh shout out to all my Nick fans out there. Uh, uh nice. And then CFL football, we got the Blue Bombers, so the season okay. ticket holder for that too. And then baseball, I was an Expos fan. Uh, they moved, and then I just kept following them as they played in Washington. There. Okay, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that the, that that Montreal is going to get another baseball team. I have a feeling. I, I think I th I've been telling everybody. I think all the professional leagues, as crazy as it sounds, with the money that you can get from expansion, you'll see the Big Four all get the thirty-six teams. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, they were talking about, I know we were going to talk about hockey, but I, since you mentioned Montreal, there was an article that came out in The Athletic that talked about Montreal and this ownership group that has put a lot of money forward to try to get one of those expansion teams. And after reading about it, I'm like, you know what? Montreal, I think, would be a really, really, really uh, dope um, market to definitely get baseball more Canada because I definitely think there is a market for it. But Absolutely. Let's get to more some more of this hockey. So, <laughs> so we're gonna go off. We're gonna go off a tangent. So <laughs> we were talking about the Bruins a lot. We were talking about this three one. Uh, you guys were down three one, and I really just want to know what your feelings were when you guys went down after four games three one. Like, what were some of your emotions? What were some of your thoughts going through that? And did you actually think you could come back? Uh, when I was watching that series, I'll be honest with you. Like when you, especially when you take the losses that we did at home in Game Three and Game Four, they're like they put I think about thirteen goals on us over two games. Like it was, it was a bit demoralizing because you're just you're just thinking it, it, it shows that everyone was right about us. It's, it starts to get in your mind that yeah, we didn't deserve to be there. The big bad Bruins, the best team in history, is you know running the floor with us. But I knew with this group. As you saw, especially come January when we, when we, because that before the new year, we were about 16, 18, and four, I believe it was. We weren't even remotely being talked about as a playoff contender. But come January, we started to get hot. And you can see during January, February, March, and April, the way we played, that there was a real possibility that if we could turn it around, this was the group to do it. Because we were one of the hottest teams starting January 1st in hockey. I think we had the second or the first best record um in the new year heading into the playoffs um so i knew if we just need to get the first one that was my mentality i did that on t- twitter to everybody you know oh we're done see you next year we're going golf and i was like we just need one um and we had beaten boston at home in game uh, i think it was the f- second game there um so if we can do it this is the group to do it and when marshawn got stopped on that breakaway uh late in the third you knew that that was the moment we needed to get started. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the opposite where you had the Boston and South Florida teams, right? Because you had Florida <laughs> down three one against the Boston. I mean, if you had the you had the or the Florida Panthers down three one against uh, the Boston Bruins, and then you had Miami who was up three nothing, and yeah. now they could potentially lose the series. So it's kind of just like a. <laughs> just the, you know what I mean? It's right? just like now that I'm thinking about this, it's just <laughs> kind of like the parallel universes and how and how and how it's crazy. But like the Panthers played the Bruins in all four of those first games, like pretty kind of tough. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. I mean, there might have been maybe one game. I, I forgot the score, but maybe there was one game where we outplayed. But I think that for the most part, you guys have really stuck it to us. And during the regular season, you guys won one or two games, I do believe. Yeah. So I think you guys had a winning record against the Bruins in the regular season, right? I think we split. I think we uh, okay. we each got. I think we each got two wins each. Um, okay. So, so I mean, even with that, it's kind of like I mean, yeah, it was AC, but there are just some teams that you typically play tougher against. And yeah. I think that this was just a bad matchup for 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 for, for the for the Bruins, honestly, because I think you guys are playing very tough. Yeah, and I know going into the playoffs, I I, I know I told people that you look at the two two record. They like you said, they didn't every game too. I believe during the regular season, apart from one, they were all one goal games. They whether it be overtime shootout or we we just lose by one or Bruins lose, but they were all close. Like you said, the way they played each other, even just during those four games in the regular season, you knew that if this was the matchup, it was going to be a grind. Exactly, exactly. And we always talked to, and, and before the show, we talked about like that mental edge with hockey, where it's like. I felt like your Panthers really had nothing to lose because no one expected you guys to make it. And I felt like all the pressure was on Boston, right? Team that had the best regular season, the best points, the best goal differential. I mean, every major statistical category that you can think of, they had the best. And so you're thinking about the Florida Panthers from their psyche. We're like, hey, we're already here. We have nothing to lose. We're down three. I'm like, you know what? We're just going to go and we're going to play. We're going to just play our best hockey and just do whatever. Right. And that's the way Paul Maurice has coached this team this year. He's always stated that this team was built for playoff hockey. Uh, you you know, with our top six the way it is, and we brought in these veterans on, you know, the minimum salary, uh, this team was built. Whether whether we – even if we didn't get to where we are now, 
you can tell that the way they're playing, it was designed for, like you said, the mentality and the long grind of a playoff, like the first spring hockey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, going to be, yeah. I mean, it's going to be, um, it's going to be quite, it's going to be quite exciting to see here. It is. So <laughs> I, I want, but after you guys, what, but to be able to make it to the Stanley Cup, what? has the past several seasons mean for you to be able to to now finally make it to the Stanley Cup do you feel like it's Stanley Cup or bust or just how are just how how just what what does this mean for you since these past several seasons of pain oh it's like I said you look back and I uh, I don't know if I speak for every Panthers fan but you look at the past seasons before this moment even not even the previous four but even further back all the jokes you know like um, you know, nobody shows up. And there were times where we were barely half. Um, you know, all the relocation talks, Quebec City, Kansas City, Houston, like um, some of the joke moments too, where we had one general manager that fired our coach and put him on a in a taxi cab and sent them home. Uh, the poor draft picks, terrible contracts, retired, bro, retired guys coming down to enjoy the sun. And just to see the last four years the buildup and culminating to get to this moment. It's just, like I said, 27 years of just um, a struggle um, being the laughing stock of the league and now showing everybody that we're the real deal, that it's our time finally. And that I don't know if it's Stanley cup or bust. Um, Cause it's just, we're enjoying the ride, man. It has been such a fun ride we've beaten the three best teams in the East to get here. I mean, we're going to enjoy this moment no matter who we play in the cup final. And I think it's setting the tone for the years to come. You know, and I think that's, I think that's important because once when you have that championship DNA, it's, it's, it's infectious, it's contagious. It's, it's one of those things that you just want to keep going. And so you hope your general manager who I read about very interesting guy, Big baseball guy. He wanted to play hockey, yeah. but then it didn't work out. He was an agent. And as we're talking, do you feel that the way – and they were saying in this article how agents always – and he studied law where it always, one, talks about finding the best solution. Yeah. And two, you understand the psyche of a player, meaning you understand their mental health. You make sure that they're physical, that they're in top physical shape, um, that they have a infrastructure around them to be successful. And do you think that because of that mindset, do you think that has helped this team be successful and be able to make this run for the, in, to the Stanley cup? Oh, hundred percent. You can see it with Zito, the way he conducts himself um, with this group. Uh, I think one of the pivotal moments and you can, and like you said, with the mental health and building confidence, one of the pivotal moments I found is that even though we were on the cusp of just making the playoffs right around the trade deadline, he came out and said that I'm not making any moves. This is the group that if we're going to do it, this is the group that'll do it. He, he flat out said right on the right, in, right to the world that I trust the 23 guys I have assembled to do what we need to do. And you can see with the coaching staff and management, you can see it with the players that they have bought in, like you said, into this culture that as a group, there's nothing that can stop us. And they and they're, and they're playing that way. Yeah, you know, you can see that the time that they do the transitions between their lines, you can see that they're skating with a level of confidence. Sometimes bringing in a new player can really destroy the chemistry or the synergy within a team because when you're bringing in a player at the trade deadline, they didn't necessarily go through the same type of battles as you guys were when trying to be able to build the synergy, trying to come together as a team. And I think that this is one of the greatest comeback stories, I think, in sports history. When you're talking about a team that was literally one point away from missing the playoffs, yeah. no one was talking about them, and no disrespect, but it's in South Florida. You don't yeah. necessarily think about hockey in South Florida. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, especially down in South Florida. But like you said, we were one point out, and for that one night when the Chicago Blackhawks beat the Penguins, I think I speak for all Panthers fans. We were diehard Blackhawk fans that night um, to get us in, but – uh, but yeah, like it, that's the thing about our team. Like we're, like you said, even though we're in South Florida, a huge market, we're the we're, we're not spoken about a lot. We're quiet. We're hidden down there because you got the Heat, you got the Marlins, 
Uh, he had Tampa Bay winning, you know, cups. And we were always just quietly just hanging around and waiting for that right opportunity. And to see it this year, it's – and it all started, and I know Calgary fans are going to hate me. It all started when we got Kachuk. He got traded in 20 – did he come the in summer, 20 – was it 20 summer I before. He okay, yeah, the last summer, summer. before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and let's talk about this guy Kachuk because there's been a lot of talk about him in, in the hashtag time to hunt. Give him a shout out yeah. to your Panthers fans. <laughs> um why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about this guy? Because this guy has a very interesting story and he has made some of the craziest goals at the most clutch moments. Oh, he's he's what 24, I believe, 25, and just yeah, he's he's uh he plays like, you know, with a passion, a grind. He's not afraid to get hit, give a hit, go to the net, get in your face, get punched in the face. Like, um, he chirps. I find he talks a lot and he chirps, and he, but he backs it up. And you can see in the way he plays, he's willing to put everything on the line. Like, you see in this playoffs, like, he's diving at pucks. He's blocking shots. He's getting into the corners and just quietly taking over games um, with his scoring. Like you said, just – it's amazing because when we traded him for last last year for him, it it shocked the the, the organization because you lose a guy like Huberto who had been there from day one since we drafted him. He was our one of our key components. Mackenzie Weger who loves the city. And then we throw in a conditional first round pick, which really stung because you're giving him two quality high end players and a pick, first round pick, and then a, a really top prospect. But when we got him, we knew that this was a sign of things to come because we got a 24 year old star locked in now for nine years in the, in the mid, in his prime. Let's like, let's be honest. It's his prime years and it's showing why we did what we did to get him. And you know, it's nice to live in South Florida with no state income tax. So <laughs> you're making that money with no state income tax. Cause I can only imagine playing like in California where it's just, it's just high tag. I don't, I don't know. Why I'm just thinking about that. I'm just right? saying it's, it's no, it's no not a bad feeling. place. No better yeah, feeling man. than getting your golf cart and going to the going to the rink. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, another guy, we're just gonna call him Bob. Bob your goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah but 93, Bob, right? A 94% save percentage, which is just absolutely insane. And he uh, I mean, I just want to talk about this guy because he is just just playing lights out right now. Oh, it's it's great to see because this year has been because last year he was phenomenal for us when we won the President's Trophy. You know, he gets over 40 wings. He's he's incredible. This year he struggled a bit. There were some injuries, you know. He just because it wasn't quite himself all year. And thank, thank goodness we had, you know, Alex Lyon and some guys coming in behind to, to help fill that, that gap while he was trying to get it sorted out. Because there was games where, you know, it just didn't seem right. Come playoff time, I think what helped his to if light a fire under him and get that confidence back is when we started Alex Lyon, games one and two there and three and just you know when you're the guy i think it hurts to see you want to support the number two but it hurts to see your job taken away so when he got that opportunity in game four i feel like you you could see that he wasn't going to lose it again uh, and the way like you said he's playing unbelievable right now this is this is why you get a guy like him for these moments and it's great to see him turn it around after such a struggle this year and just you can see it in the group too that no matter what happens, whether they're down one nothing, down two nothing, up two one, they trust him right now. They know that they've got this. Yeah, you know, and I think that it's again, it really just be paramount to Zito. And I always think of Zito, I always think of Barry Zito, the baseball player from the <laughs> yeah. Oakland days. I, I can't help but think about it. Um, you know, it's 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 crazy to, to like the mental type of edge to be able to persevere and to be able to come back where you're the top guy. You kind of lose your job, then you come back. And I think that that's what just makes <clears throat> this story about the Florida Panthers team so great because you think about all the different pieces. You think about not making any moves really at the trade deadline to the story of your <clears throat> of your lawyer and Zito and your general manager. You think about Bob. You think about just your, your, your forwards. It's just every individual has their own story yeah. and how it's gone from the season that you guys had last year to not really being talked about to finally being able to make it to this, to just this type of, um, to this type of, of moment. So 
Looks like we got a question here. So there's two questions. So what type of feelings or emotions would you feel if they made the incredible run but lost the Stanley Cup? Like, I mean, like, it would sting. I'm not going to lie. Anybody that gets to the peak, the pinnacle, right, um, it would hurt. But I would be super ex- – just be happy. Uh, I would look back, like you said, on the season we've had, being not even talked about to the incredible run getting into the playoffs to, you know, beating the best team historically in hockey. Then we go into Toronto and we cl- we ev- we win every game on the road in probably one of the tougher Canadian markets to play in. And then we sweep Carolina, one of our biggest rivals. Like it's, I think if, if and I'm just saying if uh, we weren't to win it, uh, I would still be, I would hurt, I'd be hurt but I'd be incredibly happy with the season we've had. Okay. All right. I mean, that's facts. And then just another question from our scene co-host. <laughs> uh, do you feel, do you feel more confident? Who do you feel more confident going against Dallas or Vegas? And I think that's a good segue into the next, the next segment. I think right now, the way we're playing, uh, uh, the way we're playing right now, I definitely would like us to play Vegas because Vegas plays that similar style to Boston you know they they can they can grind it out they can and I think just the way we're playing I think we'd match up well with both teams but the way it's going right now it looks like we're going to get Vegas like I, I'm going to be honest Stars fans don't be mad at me but it'd be tough to come down 3-0 but um and if they do it that'd be incredible but if it's us in Vegas I think we match up very well uh, if we were to play them, I think we'd pull it out in six, but it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a real grind that series. You know, a lot of travel. You're going Vegas to Fort Lauderdale, and it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a great series, whoever we play. And I'm looking forward to it. Just like I said, 27 years in the making. I'm going to enjoy this moment. And, you know, and then Vegas being the expansion team from several years ago, them making history themselves. Yeah, I think having two franchises that have had two different paths to ascending to this moment where Vegas made it to the Stanley cup lost to the Capitals fans or lost to the Capitals. Give a shout out to all my Capitals (laughs) fans out there. But the way that I look at this Vegas team, and we had an episode back in March with some Las Vegas Knights fans and the research that I was doing, what I found is that this team was a very balanced team offensively. They didn't have too many players score more than 25 goals. They're very, very, very balanced. And 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 I saw that their shots per attempt, they were 12th in the league at uh, 30.1. Yeah. All right. So it's still in the top half, but it's not necessarily something that has been just absolutely crazy. And I think that they match up with you guys very well because both of your teams are very well balanced. And it's going yeah. to – I think it's – I want to ask you this question. Do you think it's going to be the team that makes the least mistakes that win? Or do you think it's based on pure skill? What do you think? I think if it's us in Vegas, it's going to be similar to, to the Carolina series. It's going to take um, – because we bat, we both match up very well at 5-on-5. Five five. It's going to take special teams. And like you said, it's going to be whoever pounces on those chances. Because um, you saw in the Carolina series, power play played a pivotal role in each team scoring. So I think it's going to come down to the, yeah, the missed opportunities, the chances, and who's going to bury them because – we weren't getting much more than 20 shots a game against Carolina, but we were still, you know, cap the uh, capitalizing on our opportunities and winning those tight games. It's going to be interesting, but I think, um, yeah, I agree with you. It's going to come down to who, who doesn't make the most mistakes and who can capitalize on their, their, uh, their chances. Yeah. And so, so who would you say is a key player from your team outside of Bob and Kuchuk that can make the difference? Uh, right now, it's you see Sam Bennett. It, he's, he's one that comes to mind. Uh, he's hitting like a freight train right now. He's changing games with just his forechecking. And, you know, um, and then you see Reinhardt as well, Sam Reinhardt. He's the top six forward playing on the third line for us right now, which goes to show his leadership, he, that he's willing to take that role for the betterment of the team. Um that he slide down there. And Anthony Duclair is another one. I think he is bound to break out. He's he's there every game. He's gotten a couple goals, but I think he's due to break out. And this would be a great opportunity 
for Duke Claire, for Duke to just you know take over a game okay. or a series. Nice, nice. So that you know that's going to be very interesting. I think that the Met is probably going to be Vegas, but you never know. Man. Dallas could pull a Dallas could pull a y'all in the first round and yeah. come back. You just never know. You just they, never know. So they're going to. Have- the crazier things have happened this year, right? Right. I mean, they live to fight another day. I, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I'm very, very, very excited about this matchup um, with you guys against the Knights. Um, but just kind of finishing up here, speaking for all the hashtag time to hunt fans, <laughs> winning yeah. this championship over 27 years, <laughs> there's got to be some more emotions at the prospect of winning the Stanley Cup. And what's special about it, a lot of people don't realize, it's one trophy. They don't make more of them. No. So they, 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 they travel. They go from team to team. That's what makes this so so special. Uh, what would it mean for all the fa- – like there has to be some more emotions. There has to be some more thoughts at the prospect of it. I'm already getting goosebumps thinking about it. I'm trying not to tear up about what it could mean. Um, it's all good, man. Show your emotions. It, it, it'd be – uh, it's hard to describe, man. I'm like I said, I'm getting goosebumps. It would be, you know, we're we're almost 30 years old. We're gonna be 30 years old this year, and just it would be this the the world, man. It it, it would be, like I said, it's a culmination of just hard times, being the laughing stock, always being talked about, being moved, and just nobody taking us seriously. We were always, you know never thought of and just uh, it would just be i i oh man it's it would mean everything i would like i would uh if i had the money i'd be at the stanley cup final if i could but it would just a childhood dream come true the last time i watched it i was 10 years old and just to 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 see my team in the cup final again in my lifetime and to win it, it would be so incredible, man. I would just, it would just, I mean, that's real, man. I can, I can feel the emotion from the screen. And, and I, and I, and I always tell people like, you never know when you guys are going to get there again. You never know. So when you win those championships, you have to embrace that moment and you have to think about it. I mean, I know it's going off topic with, with like, with, 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 with baseball here, but I remember meeting some Cubs fans who, have had family members who passed away and never saw their team win that championship. And then for that city to win it, the fans, I mean, I can, I get the same feeling as you. I can just feel the emotion. Yeah, and, like... and that's, and that's what we love about sports so much because it brings people together through the good times and through the bad. And, you know, it's, I mean, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for y'all. I, you know, I know y'all beat my squad, but I'm I'm pulling for y'all just because I love the emotion that you have. Um, but before we wrap up, is there anything else that you want to say to the time to hunt nation here? You got you got the floor. It's all you. Uh, to all my Panthers fans, uh, it's it's incredible. Let's enjoy this moment. It's 30, 30 Plus, it's 30 years as a franchise, 27 long years since we've gotten to this point. Let's keep supporting the guys. Let's give them everything we can. Show up to the rink. Let's let's let them know that they can do this. We know we they can. And let's just be ready for whatever comes and enjoy this moment. Like it's it's a culmination of a long time coming, and let's really just. <laughs> let's enjoy it let's enjoy the ride hey. it's been one hell of a ride hey cheers to that man cheers to that and so sir i appreciate you coming on i look forward to seeing how you guys do game one assuming that they play vegas we'll see what happens dallas dallas is a pesky little team we will see um but is there but every guest that we bring on the show we like to give them a time to say are there any projects that you work on is there anything that you would like to tell the viewers, your Twitter, so people can follow. Uh, my, I got my Twitter handle here. It's uh, f53vander. I, I'm hoping to start a podcast or sports shows, but I'm definitely uh, I tweet out about it a lot. Um, I do different like I 
I'm the Manitoba Twitter captain for the, the Panthers. I do video video editing. I'm sure some people have seen it. I take the amazing Doug Plagans, who does our radio play-by-play. I take the audio clips he shares, and I cross-reference it onto a video. So that you can just get that, especially that Kachakul. I did it. I wanted everybody to feel like I felt, man, just that that emotion through Doug's voice of the, the, the long time coming on video. Cause he's, you don't really get to see it when he's on radio. Right. So I, right. I work, I work with Doug and we, you know, we, we put those audio files on video. Um, but no, I just, you know, I love talking sports with anybody that wants to have me. I'm always bouncing around on some shows and I, I thank you for having me. Uh, this was great. Uh, like I said, I got goosebumps in the video <laughs> and, the, and our discussions here. Thanks for giving me that floor to share the passion of the Panthers. And uh, I'm hoping that, yeah, we'll yeah, do no this doubt, again man. at and some time. They, yeah, we'll definitely have to bring you. We'll definitely have to bring you back on. Maybe talk a little bit of NHL draft. Um, NHL draft is going to be very interesting. Black Hawks got that first overall pick and got that talented kid whose name I do not remember. But that's going to be interesting. But we'll talk yeah. about that. A different day, sir. <clears throat> Glad to have you on. You know, the one thing is, is that sports is it's sports is my passion for a reason. It's these moments because people, you know, it's it's just you think about how bad your teams can be, and then you're sticking through them through the good into the bad. I'm hoping my Denver Broncos can not <laughs> disappoint this year, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Russ can cook. I don't even want him cooking. I just want him. <laughs> Make the ingredients. You can put the ingredients together. So you and me both, man. I got Deshaun hoping this is our year. So <laughs> Ooh, man, and real quick, how are you feeling about Deshaun, man? How are you feeling? He he's been out for two years. I'm gonna give him a little bit of slack. I'm not gonna I'm gonna give him a little bit of grace, you know, being out for so long. But how you feeling? I feel great. I, I think last year was uh like you said, two years rusty. I think this is our year that he comes around and we see the old Deshaun. We got him the weapons now. It's up to him. There's a chance that we might sneak a D hop. And then having Amari and D-Hop, come on. There'd be no excuses. That would be lethal. And then your running game is, I mean, top-notch. So Unheard of with Nick Chubb. Like, he's he's he just had him the ball, right? Yeah. And then still with Kareem Hunt and Dearness, uh, Dearness Johnson, I still think you guys have him. Uh, Kareem's gone. We still got Johnson. There's uh, talks we might get Henderson, the former Rams uh, running back there, to slide in at the two spot. Really? Where did uh, where did you know, Dearness Johnson go? I didn't even know that. I'll have to look that up. I'll yeah, Kareem, up. But, yeah, Kareem's gone, but we might get Henderson to, to fill okay. the line, which so. Okay. Hey, good stuff, yeah. man. But hey, make yeah. sure you guys give up. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, and, I just want to say thanks cool. again for having me before you close no, out here. No doubt. Make sure you give Mr. Evan. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not even going to try to butcher his last name again. <laughs> Char- Charbonneau. There we Got go. Her. Ready to go make buddy. sure y'all check out Evan Charbonneau's. Uh, Twitter account at 53 Vander. I fully endorse it to all of our fans, to all of our listeners. We appreciate all the support. Good luck to the Florida Panthers. And until next time, y'all be safe.